It seems like there's always a new cloud PC gaming service popping up to take a look at, and today we have another one with Shrine. There's some good, there's some bad, and we're going to take a look at all of it. So let's get into it. What's up cloud gamers, welcome back to the Cloud Gaming Extreme channel, your destination for all things cloud gaming. And today we are taking a look at a new cloud PC gaming service called Shrine. Currently only available in the United States and definitely in an early stages beta form. The service is really only just getting its legs under it and I want to be really fair to Shrine and fair to the consumer out there and try to talk about as much as the goods and the bads as I can in this video. I definitely like what I'm seeing and there's a solid foundation being built but there's also a lot of things missing and some work to be done. We're going to talk about all those things in this video. I'll try not to make it too long winded but I do want to cover as much as I can and let you know as much as I can about this service and where it stands right now. We'll be taking a look at the website, the app, download speeds and uh, downloading of game performance, actual game performance and other things in this video. So uh, I just want to do my best to give you as much information as quickly as possible. So get comfortable, hang in there and let's go ahead and take a look at Shrine. So let's start off at the most obvious place, and that's their website, where you'll go to sign up and learn more about Shrine for yourself. But I'm going to go through this for you pretty quickly anyways. The website is fairly simple and easy to understand as far as what you're signing up for. Now, let's scroll down and take a look at these setups. Now, the colored areas here are your up to or your maximum. We have three packages here at $9.19 and $39. 20 hours per month, 40 hours per month, and 60 hours per month for each of those packages. And the first two are based off the RX 5700 XTs, while the last package, the one we focus on in this video is based off of an RTX 3080 equivalent. That's where I want to start from and see what they had to offer as far as best of the best. For $39, that's actually a really good deal when you talk about cloud PCs. As far as the app and compatibility, you've got a download for the Shrine app for Windows 10 and Mac OS, but you are able to use Moonlight or Parsec if you would like. And if you'd want to use Shrine on another device besides a Windows or Mac, you will need to use Moonlight or Parsec for now, as Shrine only works on those two. Now moving on and taking a look at a couple of more questions that we've got down here. Um, as I had mentioned before, Shrine is only available in the United States and it requires an internet connection of a minimum of 15 megabits per second, so they recommend. Now, as far as going down here, of course, we can use all of our stores as far as Steam, Epic Origin, and all that type of thing, but I did run into trouble with the Xbox app, which we'll talk about. They do offer a refund policy if you've played for less than 120 minutes on your Shrine account, and they'll help you out with that through customer service. One thing lacking is there's no account management yet. Zero, nothing. You can't get into anything, which can be unsettling, especially if you want to cancel. But what I'm being told is everything can be done through support with email right now, and that by mid-April or so, they're targeting having full account management UI and stuff ready to go. Like I said, this service is just getting started, but communication with them has been great so far, and I really wanted to point this out. Let's go ahead and move over to the app on the PC, and I'll show you what they've got there. All right, guys, a quick tour of the PC app here, and I have the options all the way up to 4K for my resolution. We're going to stick with my native here, 1440p, and you can do 30 or 60 FPS, no 120 FPS, up to 30 megabits per second. And for all of my testing, I'm going to stick in the middle at 15 megabits per second. We'll definitely be testing more different options going into the future. As far as our codec and our decoder, auto seemed to work the best for me. When I tried to do .265 or mess with hardware or software, I was having trouble connecting. But if I left things at auto, it was very stable and worked for me every time. So for now, I've left it at that, but we'll do more testing. VSync I've also used, especially since we're just running 60 FPS, as it can help you with your stream uh, stability and have a little bit less with frame loss and stutters. You can start up in full screen or windowed mode and control shift F will toggle between the two, which you'll need in order to be able to log off. All you got to do is hit start and your machine will go ahead and get fired up and it'll get you on. Now, this is one small complaint that I do have, and I don't know if this is typical for Amazon EC2 uh, uh, scenarios, but it does take anywhere from two to three and a half minutes to boot the machine and to get to this connect screen. So I did fast forward this there, and I did want to mention it does take a while. Now, all we have is a power button. You can only turn the machine on or off. You cannot restart it. And then we have our connect button. As soon as you click connect, you'll get a white screen just here for a couple of seconds, and then it'll put us onto our Shrine desktop. 
Now one thing I do notice right away as we get into the desktop is the mouse cursor. I always just like to see how that feels when I'm on a cloud PC. What's the desktop experience like? Because it's often very different from the gaming experience and it felt pretty solid. I won't say it's on shadow quality as far as how the uh, the mouse and the cursor look and feel on the desktop, but it's really good. Very responsive. Latency doesn't feel too bad. It's not too floaty. As we get into Task Manager, you can see we're a bit locked down here in this window. It's missing some columns here. Uh, we don't have the option for starting up, uh, controlling startup programs or anything, at least from Task Manager, and our Performance tab doesn't have our hard disk drive. As far as our CPU, though, we do have the AMD Epic S7R32, on uh, uh, eight core or four core eight thread for that. Memory 32 gigabytes, and this hardware has been very consistent. I've logged on and off of this machine dozens of times, and it's always been the same. Of course, our Ethernet, we'll take a look at speed here in just a minute, and our NVIDIA A10G. Very similar to what you would see over like on GeForce Now with their 3080 and about 22, 24 gigabytes of RAM for that. Now, the thing is the video encoding is a heavy hitter here with the Shrine app at 47%. Now, over on something like Shadow or some of the other streamers, I often run 15 to 17%, maybe 20, and uh, this will really impact gaming performance and stream, but uh, we'll take a look at that as we get into it. Hopefully, as they continue to work on the server, they can smooth that out just a little bit more for us and get that down But I want to see what Parsec and Moonlight do and we'll look at that in a future video All right So the next cool thing to take a look at is the internet speeds for download and upload and they have incredible speed here on Shrine both for download and upload and you can see over on origin It really did reflect in my download as well I was getting usually between 1.5 gigabytes per second and 3.3 to 3.57 gigabytes per second on my download Sure, sometimes it would still dip down to about 100 megabits per second, but this was impressive and overall I downloaded this game extremely fast and was happy to see it. Now, one thing I was mentioning about this Windows being pretty locked down, there's personalization settings you can't change, there's no Microsoft or Windows Store accessible here at all. And I couldn't even do the back uh, way of installing it or uninstalling it or anything. I, I tried every trick in a book to get the store, so I couldn't download the Xbox app for Game Pass. I'm going to have to download that through a completely another way and install it myself. Um, and I didn't do that for this video, so we'll take a look at that in the future. Other than that, all the other launchers work just fine, no big deal. You can't get into really a lot with drivers or Windows updates. Again, all this kind of stuff is locked down. I don't know if this is typical for an Amazon EC2 scenario or what, like I was mentioning earlier, but or if they have chosen this. I would get and understand locking things down for the customer experience, but as an enthusiast, I would like to have more access myself. Before we move on to the gaming performance, if you want to log off your machine and shut it down, you do the shift control F to get out of full screen. Hit your Windows key and bring up your Shrine app in which you can just disconnect and then click the power button and then you'll be all good to go. All right, so let's get into gaming performance. We're gonna take a look at four games running here and we're gonna start with God of War. Now, first off, I couldn't run any of my diagnostic tools I would normally have like uh, MSI Afterburner, or FPS Monitor, uh, or any of that stuff. They would all instantly crash the VM. Even if I did the uh, the tricks to, uh, to lower their sensitivity or to get things down to where uh, it works on other VMs, it just it just would not happen. So uh, none of those would, would run at all. And I, I, that kind of harkens back to how lockdown the system is right so i have to stick with the, the overlays i have which is steam and origin and all that and that's what we'll go with for our frame rate and everything for now i wish i could show you more details about the system running but we just can't get it there yet hopefully in the future i will be able to get those to run but picture quality latency and everything starting off with god of war was excellent even though we're at that 15 megabits per second the image quality and the color accuracy is actually really good i didn't get any big uh, drops in the stream quality or pixelation. You'll you'll see some in here, especially foggy areas and stuff like that, especially at this bitrate. It's not perfect, but it's really clean for what I'm used to at that. Latency again felt really, really good and no problems for me with God of War. I was really pleased with this game running on here and locking it down to 60 FPS was even better. Anytime you're streaming 60 FPS, if you can lock your game to the same, it does really kind of help with that kind of experience. So let's move on to the next game, which is Elden Ring. And with Elden Ring, we know this game has had PC optimization issues since launch, and it's still plagued by it. Even high-end machines, even 3080s, have struggled to get 60 FPS, which is just crazy. And the other thing is, because the game isn't very well optimized and hits the system a little odd, and it already has trouble on VMs as well, it kind of shows the stream stutter a little bit more in this game as well. Not just game stutter, but more of the stream stutter. And I know from talking with Shrine that their biggest priority right now is smoothing out the streaming experience 
experience for the user before they concentrate on other things. And I think that's a smart idea. Now, a lot of the times it was good. And in God of War, I did have some stream stutter as well, but not as bad as Elden Ring. Again, I kind of expected it with this game, but I want to point it out. The stream isn't perfect and it does have some stuttering in it, no matter what game I play. Some are better, some are worse, but with 47% encoding and then running these games, it's not surprising. So I know they're working on that. Now, Elden Ring, though, for the most part, did run really well, and it's very playable here, and as far as other VMs and other PCs, it was pretty much on par, so no major complaints. Now, let's go over and take a look at Dying Light 2, because this one's pretty interesting. So right off the bat, we're just going to jump into the options for Dying Light 2 and get into video. And yeah, Windows Borderless, 1440p, VASIX on, DLSS is balanced, uh, but it's the advanced options that'll tell the story, and I was able to get it to play in DirectX 12, but no DirectX 12 Ultra, meaning no ray tracing options. So a ray tracing uh, enabled GPU and a ray tracing game and this I wasn't able to show ray tracing. I could run everything on its highest settings, no problem. Um, but this was going to be my showcase game for ray tracing and it just wasn't able to run it. It didn't work. So between drivers and the lockdown windows and updates and things like that, um, something's just not jiving there when it comes to the ray tracing in Dying Light 2. Uh, no support for the DX12 uh, Ultra. So that is what it is with that. We'll be testing other ray tracing games. I have a hunch that uh, many others will work just fine, but this game in particular didn't want to. So we'll figure out the story with that as we go. Now, other than that though, the gaming performance for Dying Light 2 on Shrine was actually really good. I didn't really have too many frame drops, and that frame stuttering that I was talking about in games and that I had a little bit in God of War, that's kind of more how it felt like. It wasn't too bad, and picture quality stays really, really clean, and the latency again is really good. So. I think they're doing a good job with the Shrine app and getting the latency and the stream quality doing really well, but we need to smooth out the stream stuttering a bit and drop that encoding percentage I think would help out a lot. So let's move over to our final game and that's Grid Legends. I gotta say by far Grid Legends was my favorite experience on Shrine out of all my game testing yet. On full maxed out settings we could run a higher frame rate but I locked it to 60 to give us a little bit of that overhead and see how it felt compared to the other games. Input latency, once again, is absolutely fantastic, and picture quality, even while moving around, and even at this lower bitrate, held out really, really well. Sure, you can pick out some pixelation if you want to, but I was impressed with the stream quality for all the games, and especially on Grid Legends. And I know we weren't hitting the system as hard with this game, so that's probably why. I want to say also that with the latency and the picture quality and everything, they're doing a great job with the Shrine app, and I think that's important. I know you can use Moonlight or Parsec, and people like me and enthusiasts like you out there watching this video will have fun doing that and you don't mind Parsec and Moonlight. But for a consumer that just wants the easiest experience, kind of like Shadow, I believe that that native app means a lot. And if Shrine can keep working on their app, get it on more devices, and continue to clean up the stream and maybe provide us with some more options, they could really be onto something that a lot of other cloud PCs just aren't doing. And with that said, with all of its goods and all of its bads, I think for the most part, Shrine's starting off at a good place. It's not perfect, and it may not be for everybody, but I think at its price point and what it's trying to offer, they may be onto something, and I can't wait to see the improvements and where they go from here. So that's going to wrap up our overview of Shrine for now, and we'll definitely be keeping an eye on the service to see where it goes and making more content in the future. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, give the video a like, and ring the bell so you know when new content drops. Thank you guys for coming to watch the video as always, and I'll see you in the next one.